Hi, my name is Monica and let's talk about my top 10 books of 2022. First off, I just want to say if you hear any background noise, please excuse that, so sorry about that. This list was somewhat difficult to make but I think I'm really satisfied by how I ended up ranking my books and I did include one reread onto this list because it was just that good. Anyways, I'm going to be starting from number 10, going to my top pick of the year. And starting at number 10, we do have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This one is an adult contemporary romance and it has the tropes of opposites attract, a 10 year age gap, as well as type of a forbidden romance. We have our main character being Alexis and she's an ER doctor. And one night she gets her car stuck in a ditch in the middle of nowhere. When a passerby, Daniel, comes out and helps her, right off the bat, their chemistry is undeniable. However, with their differences, them being 10 years apart and completely different lifestyles, their relationship is one that's hard to commit to, particularly for Alexis. Through dual point of views, we learn that Alexis is struggling to carry forward her family's medical legacy, while Daniel is the mayor of a small town and he's struggling to maintain his bed and breakfast. Also, before I get into anything deeper, I really love the quote that Daniel repeats in his book and he says grace costing nothing and that carries a really strong lesson throughout the entire book. When these two are together, there's instantaneous chemistry, banter, and laughter together, and very fun flirtatious moments. The main large issue in the relationship comes from Alexis because she's quite nervous about her friends' and family's opinions about Daniel, but then she then comes to realize that their opinions don't matter for what she chooses in her life. I really did like the nice highlights in this book, mentioning the need for physicians in rural areas and how there is a lack of proper healthcare infrastructure in rural areas because that is a real life issue. So I really did like mention of that in this book. I also love the journey of these two relationships being in that small town setting and how being kind really costs you nothing at all. And the many rom-com moments had me laughing out loud and I really do highly recommend this romance. At number nine, we have House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. This one I originally had in my top five of 2022 so far video as my number one pick, but it fell down to number nine. For this one, this is book two in the Crescent City series, and I also did upload a reading vlog and a in-depth discussion review video for this one and I'll link that in the description box below. For this one, I was expecting to love it because I really did enjoy House of Earth and Blood book one. So if you don't know what this series is about, we're following Bryce Quinlan, who is a half a half human. She's intelligent, strong-willed, and she gets roped in, into solving a murder mystery that she does not want to be involved in at all in book one, alongside with the help of the angel Hunt Athlar. Continuing into book two, we still follow Bryce and her adventures in this world, and we have other points of views that we do follow. In book two, we do get deeper character development as well as amazing cinematic action sequences and very intense revelations. However, I did wish that there was more structure to the plot buildup instead of info dumping, but the consequences of House and Sky Breath makes me very, very excited for book three and to see how everything pays off then. It was such a wild ending and everything was being built up to that moment and I'm really, really excited to see what happens from here. At number eight, we have Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I also did upload a full in-depth review of this one if you're interested in that. Carrie Soto is a retired tennis player and one day she's watching a Grand Slam and someone is about to take her titles record. Carrie makes a choice to come out of retirement and retrain at 37 years old to try to defend her Grand Slam title record. It won't be easy, but Carrie's father agrees to be her coach once again. We follow Carrie throughout her life growing up into present day in 1995. There's focus on the technicalities of tennis as well as the high stakes nature of the sport. Also, we look at double standards, older athletes as well as competitiveness. 
because Carrie isn't a really likable character. She's quite a sore winner and loser. She likes to gloat about her wins and she has poor sportsmanship. But I ended up rooting for her to make her come back successfully and her persistence is one to be admired. I also really enjoyed the relationship between Carrie and her father, her coach, and that the ending of the book really left off on a hopeful note for Carrie going forward. The last portion of the book was like the final tennis match. It felt like I was watching a real life tennis match and hoping and cheering for Carrie to win. And me not being quite a sporty person and learning about tennis while reading this book, it was really fun and intense to understand the really competitive nature of tennis. So I put Carrie at number eight and then moving on to number seven, I have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is a YA fantasy romance and it's ultimately about a love story about death and Signa, our main character. So Signa has had a connection to death throughout her entire life because of her guardians mysteriously passing away ever since her parents died and she's been left as an orphan and that kind of makes her quite lonely. Until Signa is sent to live with her relatives, the Hawthorns, she discovers that there's something more going on with the Hawthorns than one might first realize. With her aunt also recently being passed away and Signa quickly discovers that her aunt hasn't just passed away but she has been murdered. With that, Signa finds herself being roped in into this murder mystery and trying to figure out what has happened to her aunt alongside with the help of death. With death by her side, she does have some supernatural abilities. And with them two working aside each other, there is their budding relationship. And I really didn't like the characterization of death. He is quite charismatic, he's charming, and he really gives off the I'm a whole lonely immortal vibe. The relationship also didn't really feel forced, but it's like the natural consequence of two lonely people being drawn together in the most strangest of circumstances. Their relationship between Signa and Death was something that I did want from the relationship from Addie LaRue and Luke in The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Really, I'm really excited to see what happens in the sequel Fox Love with Signa and Death and also we have a new player in town, Fate. At number six, I have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I remember reading this book really quickly back in January 2022 because it has very short chapters. What this book is about is about a magical library located in between life and death. Within this library, the shelves are never ending and each book is a life that you could have lived. Essentially, with every decision that you have made, it ponders the question of what if you chose differently and you have the ability to choose one of these books and try out these lives. Our main character is facing this decision to either continue living in her current reality or go back into one of these books and choose that new life. I really do recommend you to read this book for yourself to find out what happens to Nora because it's very interesting to see her own choices and her thought process. This is a magical realism book but the messages are quite straightforward with living your life without regretting the decisions that you have made, and also to live your life without pursuing the dreams of someone else. It's a very simple message, but a very hard-hitting one for everyone, I would say. I absolutely love this book and very highly recommend it if you do want something a little bit deeper, a little bit philosophical. <laughs> Halfway point through this video, at number five, we have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. We follow our protagonist, Shiori, who is the princess of Kiana. Her hidden magic suddenly flares and she then runs away from her wedding ceremony. But her stepmother does notice this. In a move for power, her stepmother transforms her six brothers into cranes and threatens Shiori to not speak of this to anyone or write of this to anyone or she will kill off her brothers one by one. So Shiori is also cursed herself and she's unable to be recognized with a bowl stuck in her head. She is then navigating her kingdom to find out a way to break off these curses. I absolutely love the world of Kiara with its descriptions of its customs, food, and traditions being brought to life. The writing itself really did give it a fairy tale atmosphere and I really love learning about the unique magic in this world with Shiori being able to animate paper cranes and we also get to see mythical creatures such as dragons. Shiori is a strong protagonist and you learn to care for her well-being and I really liked how she undergoes a lesson of seeing how the commoners work in her kingdom and how she learns that she does come from a place of privilege. We also get very strong sibling and familiar bonds in this book and we do have an arranged marriage trope although the romance is on the back burner. 
but this fantasy has great action, great character growth, and also mythical creatures, and I'm really excited to see how this duology does wrap up. At number four, we have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is book two in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. Just to let you know, I do have a reading vlog for this book as well as a duology review of book one and two uploaded already. If you don't know what this book series is about, we are following a hopeless romantic Evangeline who makes a deal with a fate Jax to stop the wedding between the love of her life and her stepsister. So in book two, we continue right off where book one ends and in this one, we have new adventures, we have new curses, we also have a lot of betrayal. I would say book two reads more as a fantasy romance than book one did. So in this one, we do get a lot of romance development between our two characters. Jax is still morally gray and treats Avonjan Lean somewhat questionably but he still has an undertone of caring for her. Speaking about Jax, we do learn more about his origin and where his magic came from. We do get some very much needed character development from Evangeline herself and I really did love the trajectory of where her character growth goes. Oh my gosh, that ending made me cry. It was such a bittersweet ending. I do think that ending was very fitting to the theme of not all fairy tales have happy endings that really shown throughout the series. I really can't wait for book three that's been recently announced that's releasing in September I believe. Do highly recommend this book if you want a good emotional read. Coming at number three, we do have two books here but they're part of the same series. They are Legendborn and Bloodmark by Tracy Dion. This is a YA fantasy dark academia book and I absolutely fell in love with this one this past year. Legendborn, we're following Brie Matthews who is enrolled into an early college program and on the first night at campus, she notices a magical flying demon attack and she's the only one who could see it. She quickly finds out that there's a group of students on campus called Legendborn who fight off these demons. But Brie herself also has a strange mysterious connection to the Legendborn and somehow they are connected to her mother's death. Then Brie pursues the chance to join the Legendborn. I did also upload reading logs for both Legendborn and Bloodmark and I also have a full in-depth discussion review for both of these books if you're interested in that. There were so many things to talk about these two books but I'll go over my general thoughts here. The magic system in this book is not super complex to understand and it was inspired by the Legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, which I really like the spin that the author took on. We also have the dark academia setting set at a university. We have supernatural creatures running around, supernatural powers, a murder mystery, and an impending magical war. Our main character, Brie, is a definition of black girl magic and her journey with the grief is very raw and powerful. Other characters I really loved were Nick, William, and Cell. They were all great. There's also more topics being covered such as colonialism, slavery, discrimination, racism, as well as grief and trauma. But I think the author did an amazing job at interweaving all of these themes along with the POC rep and LGBTQ plus rep and it was all nicely crafted. Within book two, Brie is definitely a character that does grow into her own powers and standing up for what is right. I do really highly recommend the Legendborn and Bloodmarked and whatever book three will be called because I refuse to believe this is only a duology. And at number two, we do have a reread and this is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. For this one, I loved it. It's a reread. I had to put it on this list even though I did not include other rereads on this list. I had to include this one. As an adult fantasy, I would say this book is quite consumable and very easy to read. Even clocking in at a thousand pages, it wasn't as long as you might think it might be. Getting back into the world of Roshar with all of its characters, Khaled and Shalon, Dalinar, Aelin, and more, I miss them. I really was really happy to get back into this world. I especially loved the journeys of each character and how deep they felt and how they all had their own personal motivations to do what they did. We have Kaladin fighting with his depression, learning to overcome his mental barriers from becoming a slave from a soldier and fighting to protect others. We have Shalon who is a talented artist and she also really wants to become a scholar. Exploring her newfound freedom with becoming the ward to Yasna, she actually has a secret that will turn her into a thief. And we have Dalinar who is a high prince who experiences strange visions 
legends of a long lost history. Dalinar is also a warlord and struggles a lot with his morals. Overall, the journeys of all the characters, the deep and rich history of this world, the magical system, and the movements of politics and war were all interwoven so so incredibly into this fantastic book. It was just so good and I think I just need more of this world and I can't wait to continue on with this series. And I think it's safe to see that The Way of Kings is one of my all-time favorites. Really excited to continue on and see what happens with this group of characters in the world. Finally, my top book of the year and at number one we have Jade City by Fonda Lee. We are following the Call family clan who helps control the island of Kakan. However, they are all with their arrival and a clan war is brewing. What makes it quite interesting is that they are green bones and these are supernaturally gifted warriors powered by jade and they add a twist into this urban fantasy world. The blend of technology, guns, and cars along with the supernatural element being jade, it wasn't overwhelming or overjarring. It fit in quite nicely into this Asian inspired world and it has its own unique culture, customs, as well as food. The absolute best part of this book was the growing tensions between the two clans. So the Call family is known as the No Peak clan and their rivals is known as the Mountain clan. The buildup between these two clans with the small betrayals here and there and skirmishes was very very nicely done. You really don't know who to trust and who might betray our main characters and with our main characters we do have several different points of views. I think there was four main ones with them being Lan, Hilo, Shay, and their cousin Anden. Each point of view is well balanced and they have their own distinctive voice and we also explore a lot of their relations with sibling tensions and complex family dynamics. The other thing that was really interesting to me was the clan structure itself because we have three main people at the top of the clan. We have the clan leader, we have the business head, and then the crime head. It's really nice to see the balance between whether they chose to go with diplomacy or violence with ever they're talking about or trying to make a decision on. Fonda Lee's writing was just immaculate. <laughs> it was very, very immersive. Her descriptions really brought this world to life. I really love this one and I'm super excited to finish off this trilogy in 2023. So uh, those were all my favorite books of 2022. It was a great reading year for me. Really a year of me finding my groove here on booktube and trying to see what works for me and what doesn't work. I'm having a lot of fun making these videos and sharing my thoughts and feelings on whatever I do read whether that be positive or negative and I really can't wait to see what 2023 has in store for me on the reading front. I hope you're all enjoying your new years and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!